Hello children, welcome back. The topic I am going to teach you today is Phylum Tenophora from class 11 chapter 4 Animal Kingdom. Let me tell you, this year NEET had a lot of questions from this chapter. So every phylum is very important. I have already given you a comparative account of all the non chordates in my first three lectures. Now I am going to explain Tenophora in detail. Right? So let us first have a look here. Before I proceed into the topic Tenophora in detail, you must have noticed I have written here that they are called as comb jellies or sea walnuts. The Tenophora, the phylum Tenophora ke jo representatives hai, that is Tenophorans, are commonly called as comb jellies or sea walnut. Why do we call them? This we will see in the in, as we proceed through the lecture. So first let us come to the habitat and if you recall the habitat of Tenophora is they are all exclusively marine. There is not a, they are all aquatic, there is not a single freshwater representative. All of them are exclusively marine. So this is a very important point because there are only very few organisms phylum on this earth who are exclusively marine. One of them being Tenophora. Now if you go to the body form, I told you that how does the body of the Tenophora look like? See, look at this diagram. If you look at it, the body is, all, is something oval or round shape. This is again the diagram of a Tenophora. It is like a, a, a you know, oval shape. Some of them are round in shape. The body is, has externally eight rows of ciliated comb plates formed by the fusion of cilia that helps in locomotion. Now what I mean to say this is, just look at this. Say this is a, a Tenophora. It has eight, not one, eight double rows of cilia. See, this is one row of cilia like this and this is another row of cilia. And as a eight, eight nahi, hai See one, then again I am drawing another one here. Right? And another one here. Like this, since it is a circular structure, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can see here. See this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And these are all double rows of cilia, right? Since it has double row of cilia, it looks like a comb, right? So, this 8 double row of cilia is called as comb plates. Think, and since it looks like combs, so we call them as, I told you, comb jellies. You remember? The first word I said is they are called as comb jellies because their body is little jelly-like. It is little soft. You can see here. And they have eight rows of eight double rows of cilia. This cilia helps in locomotion. So we call them as comb plate. Why do we call them as sea walnut? You know what is a walnut? Walnut is akrot, what we call it in Hindi. And if you look at the complete, you know, walnut, the walnut also has grooves like this. Have you ever observed the walnut? If not, please do Google. You will see walnut, a crore. Jo pahar se hota, it seems as though it has rows like that. So since it resembles a walnut, so we also call them as sea walnut. So how does the body look like? The body is either oval or it is circular, but it is characterized. All xenophorans are characterized by the presence of eight rows of eight double rows of cilia. This looks like a comb, so we call them as comb plates. This cilia, it helps in locomotion. Besides, in some of them, you can see from the diagram here, besides this double row of cilia, of course cilia helps in locomotion. Some of them, they have tentacles as well. And you can see very well, these tentacles also bear cilia. So these tentacles and the cilia attached with them, that further helps in locomotion. You have to understand that tenophorans are exclusively marine, they are aquatic and in aquatic medium you need something which will help you you know move in the aquatic medium. So it is this cilia and these tentacles again you know lined by cilia which helps in locomotion. The animal exhibits bioluminescence. What is bioluminescence? The property of living organisms to emit light. The property of living organisms to emit light. I'll give you an example. Organisms to emit light. Now I'll give you another example. See, I'm telling you. You must have heard about, you know, Juguru. When we were small, we would run, you know, in the bushes and we would capture them within our, you know, uh, these two palms and we would like to have a 
look at them. Why? Because they would sparkle in dark. This property of living organisms to emit light, this is called as bioluminescence. And many thenophorans, you can see here, this is showing bioluminescence, it is just shining. They show bioluminescence. So this is about how they look about. This is about their body forms. Right? So now that we have done body forms, let us go for the symmetry. Like I'll tell you one thing, please you will follow your NCRT strictly. I was going through the 2020, uh, you know, neat question paper. I saw some of the questions which had a double, you know, answers, but they were, the question was taken exactly from the NCRT. In the NCRT, I, I opened that chapter, I read that line and then I saw, okay, this is what is written in the line. Now the questions are 100% NCRT. So though I am telling you something outside NCRT, as per your NCRT, the symmetry is radial, right? They have called the symmetry to be radial. A radial symmetry you know is one where if you cut the animal across any radius, they will be divided into two equal halves. But if you refer any, you know, higher books, you will see that this symmetry is written as biradial. What is a biradial symmetry? A biradial symmetry means it is a mixture of bilateral and radial symmetry. Bilateral plus radial, concave biradial. Why do we say that? Because externally, if you look at this organism, it looks like a radial symmetry. Parsideko, it is circular. So it seems that any axis passing through the center will divide it into two equal halves. But when you look at the internal structure, look at its digestive system, internal body structure is actually bilaterally symmetrical. So since it is bilaterally symmetrical inside from within and it is radially symmetrical from outside, we call this type of symmetry as biradial symmetry. So we have done about the habitat, we have done about the body form, we have done about the uh, symmetry. Next that we will see is your, you know, germ layers. We know that we have already studied it in the comparative structure that they are all diploblastic. That means the body is divided into an external ectoderm and an endoderm in between. A jelly like mesoglia may be present. So mesoglia may be present and you know that in most of them, the mesoglia, they have an ebocyte cells. A little bit muscle cells also may be present. Right? In some cases, in some tenophorans, you know that after tenophora, we will have platyhelminths. And platy helmets are triploblastic. You know that platy helmets are triploblastic, hote hai, right? So what happened is, in many of the tenophorans in the later stage, some of them, they seem to be triploblastic. If you remember, I told you not once, but many times, there has been no one magic. It's not magic that tenophora is diploblastic and suddenly, platy helmets will become triploblastic. You will find some organisms at the transition level. So you will study, this is for your knowledge, but you, what you will study for your exam is that, that they are diploblastic. You are not going to say they are triploblastic. And the level of organization is tissue level. You know that it is from platy helmet onward, the level of organization became organ level of organization. Right? So we have done a little bit about the level of organization. Now we will move into the next topic uh, after the germ layers. That is the... Uh, some other structural features. What, are, what is about the, some other structural features? I want now again this what I am going to tell you is a little bit outside your NCRT. If you remember in case of cylindrates, right, the tentacles had special cells called as needoblast cells. Remember, I told you that in case of cylindrates, uh, uh, sorry, this is not a cylindrate. In case of cylindrates, they have made a hydra. They have, the tentacles have a special type of cell known as needoblast cell. These needoblast cell, they basically help in defense offense. Tenophorans also have some special cells in their tentacles. You can see many of them wear tentacles. Usually they have only 8 rows of external rows of cilia, less comb plates. No nematocyst, that is needoblast cell is found, right? Tentacles, however, May, there may be tentacles which are two in number and these tentacles they contain an adhesive structure called as coloblast. Take this coloblast can be considered comparable to needoblast cells 
as found in your cylindrate. Cylindrate mein needle blast cell tha. They have special cells called as coloblast cell. Now just imagine this is their tentacles and they have some sticky cells called as coloblast cells. So these coloblast cell they do the same function as needle blast cell because it is sticky if it attaches to a prey. Agar kisi prey mein attach karega it will suck the prey. So it basically helps little bit in you know locomotion and in, in attaching the prey but in them the structure is called as coloblast cell you can see it over here ran in cylindrates there was a similar structure on the tentacle called as needoblast cells right so we have done a lot about their structure now that the structure is done this is the bioluminescence I was telling you about see their property to emit light now we will go to one, systems one by one First, let us come to the digestive system. In digestive system, you know that in cylindrates, the digestive system was incomplete. There was a single opening which served as both mouth and anus. There was a single opening which served as mouth and anus. Right? That means the digestive system was incomplete. In them also, the digestive system is incomplete. But there has been little development. Development means the digestive system may they have developed a pharynx a, a small uh, you know stomach that is little branched okay in some cases in some exceptional cases the digestive system has even this is the mouth it is showing in some and then you can see here you will the pharynx just see the labeling this is the mouth this is the pharynx then you can see the stomach the stomach is highly branched on both the sides and the digestive system mostly is incomplete in the rare cases the digestive system has actually you know gone to the other end forming a complete system with a particular mouth and anus but this is in some cases that the digestive system is incomplete it has a mouth and that single opening it acts as the anus and thus there has been some differentiation little bit pharynx and branch stomach has actually come in this group you know that in them the digestion is extracellular and intracellular part of the digestion takes place in the digestive system and the remaining part is digested in the individual cells so it is partly intracellular and partly extracellular right so once we have done digestion now we will come to respiration and excretion you know that they do not have any respiratory or excretory system it all takes place through the body surface so respiratory and excretory systems are absent. They are carried out across the body surface through diffusion. Coming to nervous system, I told you that in cylindrates and tenophora, the nerves they are arranged in the form of a net. They form a diffused nerve net. But here I want to tell you one thing. What is it? Normally, any nervous system is, is associated with sense organs. You know what I am trying to say? हम जब भी भी नर्वस सिस्टम की बात करते हैं, नर्वस सिस्टम इंक्लूड्स नॉट ओनली द ब्रेन, बट इट आल्सो इंक्लूड्स ब्रेन, बट इट आल्सो इंक्लूड्स सेंस ऑर्गेन्स। फॉर एग्जांपल, इन आर बॉडी, द नर्वस सिस्टम इज़ नॉट मेड अप ऑफ़ ओनली ब्रेन एंड स्पाइनल कॉर्ड। वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ़ सेंस ऑर्गेन्स लाइक so these are the first uh, you know, group of organisms where a sense organ in the form of statocyst is found. Now what is a statocyst? Since they are aquatic marine organisms, whenever you swim in water, you need to have a balance. Nahi ek aise socho, ek machli, rahi hai, kabhi ulat jayegi, kabhi seedhi ho jayegi. But how do you even know that they are you know, in the right position? They need to have a balancing organ. Right? The first sense organ in the form of a balancing organ called as statosis is visible in tenophora. Tenophora are the first one where the nervous system also had a sense organ in the form of statosis which basically helps in balancing. After nervous system we will go for the reproductive system. You have studied it that in case of tenophora they are hermaphrodite. That means male and female sex organs, they are found within the same body. They are bisexual. You know that in them, a sexual reproduction does not take place. Aapke NCRT mein clear cut likha hai. There is no a sexual reproduction in case of tenophorans. Right? Fertilization in them is external. 
that means the male and female gametes they are released outside the body of the uh, of the individual and there the fertilization takes place the development is indirect that means they have an intermediate larval form so i'm just showing you the diagram of the larva the name of the larva is cydipid larva as i told you in your syllabus now the names of the larva has been removed i just share it with you out of interest so iska ek larva hota hai uska larva ka naam hai cydipid larva and all sexual reproduction is completely absent in them right so this is about their reproduction now once we have done that we will go for the examples again i will tell you from this chapter examples are very 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 important you have to know only two examples so that comes as a relief one of them is called as pleurobranchia this figure is also there in your ncrt pleurobranchia and the other is tenoplana iska figure aapke ncrt mein nahi hai i have just put it for your interest and i have given a mnemonic for this as well and that is pc ab apne computer mein bolte ho na pc so uh, in tenophora the shortcut is pc that is it is pleurobranchia and tenoplana i'll just share one or two more photographs of this organism so see this is actually pleurobranchia can you see how it looks like a jelly why it is called as comb jelly it has eight rows of cilia and then it is completely jelly like you know when i look at it it just seems like a amla jo hum log amla khate hain just see that it is jelly like and you can see those eight rows of cilia across it so this is how actually the pleurobranchia looks and this is how the tenoplana looks see at the bottom of the sea they are marine so these are the two examples right we will very quickly go through your ncrt to see what are the points given in your ncrt please open page 51 of your ncrt this is what is written in your ncrt this see this is the diagram of you know this is a tenophora that is pleurobranchia this is from your ncrt and i really want it is only very short you study i don't know what you study it hardly matters but ncrt point should be there medical is all about ncrt tenophoras are commonly called as sea wallers or comb jellies i told you they are exclusively marine very very important point radially uh, symmetrical i told you they are biradial but in your ncrt it is radial they are diploblastic with tissue level i told in some of them they have become triploblastic but you will learn diploblastic the level of organization is tissue the body bears eight rows of ciliated comb plates which is used for locomotion digestion is extracellular and intracellular bioluminescence is very well marked in them sexes are not separate that means they are bisexual reproduction takes place only by the uh, you know uh, uh, sexual there is no asexual reproduction and fertilization is external with indirect development i told you the name of the uh, the larva is cydipid larva though it is not there in your ncrt two examples i told you pc pleurobranchia and tenophora this you have to study.